Step into the chaotic pages of the Old West, where legends are born and outlaws roam the borders. Among the notorious figures that have emerged from this era, one name stands out, Jose Chavez y Chavez. This mysterious outlaw, known for his ruthlessness and cunning, has left an indelible mark on the history of the Wild West. In this video, we dive into the fascinating life story of Jose Chavez y Chavez, good friend of the legendary Billy the Kid. Jose Kobe Frey Chavez y Chavez emerged as a notorious outlaw, Mexican-American from the New Mexico Territory, now recognized as the state of New Mexico in the United States of America. Historical documents suggest that he was born to a Spanish father and an Apache mother. Chavez became an outlaw at a relatively young age when he joined the Lincoln County Authority. Born in 1851 in Cebaleta, New Mexico, Jose Chavez y Chavez's early years are still a mystery with very little information available. Initially, he worked as a hired laborer, but realized the arduous nature of manual work with very low pay. Therefore, he gradually turned to petty theft and cattle theft. In his 20s, Chavez became a member of the regulatory agency and became involved in a series of petty thefts and various criminal activities, eventually proving himself useful to Billy the Kid's gang. Alongside Billy the Kid, Doc Skurlock, Charlie Bowder, and others connected to the administration, Chavez was actively involved in the Lincoln County War that lasted from 1878 to 1879. Chavez met Billy the Kid, Jim French, Fred Waite, Charlie Bowder, John Middleton, and Tom O'Foliard after he decided to join the Tunstall McSween Group in their fight against the Dolan Group. Within the Tunstall McSween Group, a side faction has emerged, aiming to replace the Dolans and reap financial benefits. Called the Regulators, the group included 45 gunmen, including Chavez. During his time as a member of the governing body, Chavez developed close relationships with Billy the Kid and Jim French. On February 18, 1878, the murder of John Tunstall took place, followed by the murder of Sheriff William Brady of Lincoln, a Dolan supporter, on April 1st of the same year. Chavez later admitted responsibility for Brady's murder. A series of retaliatory murders ensued from both sides culminating in the burning of McSween's house on July 19, 1878. The house's shelter for 14 people, including the McSween couple and 12 cowboys, leading to the tragic deaths of six people. However, all the members of the Billy the Kid gang managed to escape from the house. By March 1879, Governor of New Mexico Lew Wallace had begun his war on crime in the territory, and one of his priorities was to stop the ongoing war between the Dolans and Tunstall McSween's supporters. With this in mind, Wallace founded Lincoln County Mounted Rifles, a group of which Chavez became a member as a private. However, the Mounted Rifles failed in their purpose and the group only lasted about three months, a time when Chavez remained with Billy the Kid's gang. Chavez allegedly testified alongside Billy the Kid in court to try to insinuate the U.S. Army's involvement in the McSween home fire and the subsequent deaths that occurred in the fire. It is believed that in 1880, Chavez murdered a dangerous prisoner in a prison of New Mexico. After the death of Billy the Kid in 1881, Chavez embarked on a journey across the American Southwest, often with no specific destination in mind. Finally, he arrives in Las Vegas, New Mexico, where a chance encounter awaits him, Bob Ford, the killer of Jesse James. Legend has it that the two men agreed to enter a shooting competition. However, Ford was so amazed by Chavez's marksmanship that he fled shortly after being asked to duel Chavez. Later, Chavez assumed the role of deputy sheriff, but he was said to be unable to give up his life as an outlaw. He builds a friendship with Vincente Silva and becomes affiliated with two of Silva's factions, including Las Goras Blancas. While many English-speaking settlers viewed this group as a band of robbers, many Hispanic Americans in New Mexico saw them as freedom fighters. Silva's other organization, known as the Society of Bandits, faces charges from Anglo immigrants in the New Mexico Territory. Those who accuse them of operating like a mafia by forcing people to give up their assets for illegal profit. By the order 
of Vicente Silva, Patricio Mays was killed on October 22, 1892 at the hands of Jose, Eugenio Alarid, and Julian Trujillo. In February 1893, the group received instructions to remove Silva's brother-in-law, Gabriel Sandoval, for fear that he might discover the murder and alert the authorities. The untimely death of Gabriel Sandoval had a profound effect on Silva, as his wife grew increasingly concerned about her brother's whereabouts. In a complicated turn, Silva orders Chavez, Alarid, and Trujillo to kill his wife, and the three men become concerned about Silva's mental state. While digging a grave for Silva's wife, they came to a decision. They would also end Silva's life. When Silva arrived at the burial site with his wife's lifeless body, the trio shot him mercilessly, placing them both in the same grave. The following year, 1894, saw the arrest of an individual for the murder of Mays, implicating Chavez, Alarit, and Trujillo in the death of Gabriel Sandoval. In April 1894, Alarit and Trujillo had to appear in court, which resulted in their convictions and life imprisonment for said murder. Upon learning of their arrest, Chavez quickly chose to flee with a substantial award of $500 placed on his head. Finally, on May 26, 1894, he was arrested in Socorro, New Mexico. The jury found him guilty and he received the death sentence by hanging. Chavez then underwent retrial by the Territorial Supreme Court, which again sentenced him to death. However, Governor Otero, affected by the public outcry surrounding the case and under growing public pressure, reduced Chavez's sentence to life in prison. Thus, on November 23, 1897, Jose Chavez y Chavez entered the territorial prison as prisoner number 1089, where he would be held until the age of 57. At the age of 57, on January 11, 1909, Governor George Curry pardoned Chavez, despite him serving only 11 years. This act of leniency was granted to him due to the help and support he provided the prison guards during a violent uprising. After serving his prison term, Chavez returned to Las Vegas, where he spent the remaining 15 years of his life with loyal friends, embracing a peaceful life. In 1924, at the age of 72, Chavez died peacefully, nestled in his comfy bed beside his companion, Liberado Baca. Baca, perhaps the only individual who has faced Chavez in a duel and is alive to tell the story, is a witness to their enduring friendship. Chavez found his final resting place in a modest cemetery located in Milagro, Guadalupe County, New Mexico, 